Hi, I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios, and I'm here to show you today Song Mode, a new control surface script for the Launchpad range. Now, I've got a Launchpad X here, one of the latest Launchpads. It's also compatible with the Mini, the Mark III, pretty much all of the Launchpads bar the pros at this time. Now, Song Mode is a new way of interacting with Session View on Ableton Live. To access the new mode, hold down Session and Custom and press Custom again. And it divides the grid into two halves. The top half represents songs. Songs grouped together, scenes represented on the bottom, and they're derived from the song name. So if you look on my set here, I've got intro and in brackets song one. So when I select song one, the bottom half then gives me all of the scenes within that song. Moving to the second song, you can see the bottoms change there. So I have the ability to trigger and indeed select new scenes. Now, if your song effectively is made up of lots of scenes, and let's select that again. So I'm holding down the record arm button and selecting a scene. You can see here we've got well over 32, which is as many buttons as the bottom half has. But you'll see that the right arrow has lit, and that enables me to bank between the numbers of the scenes. Relatively simple to get set up. I've got my track set up here. I've got my first five tracks is effectively one song, and to the right of that, I've got no stop buttons. So I can trigger those if I go to the first one. And I can work through my scenes. And then move to song two. Let's select the first scene. And as you can see here, we have no stop buttons to the left. So triggering one of these scenes. And I can quickly move back to the first song and perhaps trigger the fade out. Now, if I want to stop all my clips, I could use a stop clip button and that will bring everything to a halt. And I can also toggle live's transport on and off. Now to actually set up these songs is, is relatively easy. So if I want to say move song four into song five, all I need to do is select the scene, hold down the volume button, and tap the song I want it to be in. So let's do that for the rest. So volume button, that five, as you can see on the screen, the song four is becoming song five. Song four, song five, song four, song five. And you'll notice in the last uh, scene, I've actually just got stop buttons. If I just wanna stop that song uh, and realistically move on to the next one. Now, the actual songs can be split up. So your scenes could be divided by many, many uh, scenes. For example, in my song six, I've actually got song six at the top. So let's select six. And I've got my reset recall, uh, which is a ClipX Pro snap action. And if I were to record arm, hold down, which is the select button, and select the next scene, you'll see it jumps way down to, what's that? That's scene 15 or so. And in there, I've got four bind actions for working with other MIDI controllers so that they map to the currently uh, selected device and work through the parameters effectively. I've also got some other ideas for how to use this. Let's go to here. Uh, this is a recall of a, a snap action that has been recorded on this FX rack. So if I wanted to let, let's let's go back to the first track, let's bring that in and we'll go to here. I can launch a dummy clip on that particular track. letting it go will actually use the, the follow clip Excel to recall the settings on that track. And I've got other dummy clips here, such as a set of stutters, some stuttered echoes. And again, one tap will play them, the second tap as they're set to gate mode will stop them and then it will do the reset recall. 
These last ones though, uh, we'll cover it in another video, but these will recall ALC clips and they're one of uh, Ableton Live's most underused um, features. So let's just launch the dreamy one. And that will actually create a new MIDI track, which is automatically armed and is ready for my input from the push because it's basically it's loading a preset of massive and it's also bringing in when I save the ALC clip the other devices and effects that I have going there. Now one of the questions that came out let's just go back to session uh, from the various comments on the previous videos was what if you wanted, uh, let's go back to the first one, you wanted the push, as you can see here, there's no action to follow around as you select your scenes, because you may want to get to song three, and then as you select that, want to have the, the push focused on that song three as well. Couple of ways you can do that. If you have Max for Live, our Launch Sync XL uh, device gives you the option of automatically syncing this session grid to whatever is selected as a scene and or indeed a track. But if you've also got ClipX Pro, a action of CS, which is control surface, I've got the push to, and I want to ring link that to the scene. Let's just trigger that. And now, as I move around my set, I also have my push following along with me. Setup of this, so, so simple. If I go to Live and Preferences, the Launchpad X has two uh, inputs and outputs from a MIDI perspective. The first one, the DAW out and in is set up to be communicating by the Launchpad X for song mode. And the second input and output, which is pure MIDI, is set up for the song mode Launchpad X. Brand new way of dealing with session view. Get away from looking at the screen. Color code your scene so you know what's going on. Choose your songs. Dummy clips. Banks of ClipX Pro actions, moving the push to around. There's, there's so much that can be done with this. But for me, the simplicity of song mode with the depth of push to, it's a winning combination. Thanks for watching. Cheers.